Hi everyone, I'm Viv McGrath and I'm doing this video today because one of my followers has actually asked me to record it and she said, can you talk about empathy? So I thought, well that's a big subject, what exactly do you mean by that? And she said, well, the fact that we have too much of it, that for example, when I was in court and I was winning the case and I looked over at my ex and saw him looking really dejected and a bit down and out and I just felt so sorry for him. And she said, why is it that we just feel so sorry for them even after the years of abuse he put me and my children through? And I thought, what a good question. You know, because I did that. Even after my ex nearly killed me, I went back to him because I felt so sorry for him. I felt that he needed me and I put his pain and his needs above my own pain and how I felt about the fact that he almost killed me. It overrode the fear I'd had when he, when he did that. It's, it's insane. So I think the word empathy is a really, really good one. And actually, it's key. And the, the reason is this, is because we have so much of it. And that is what the narcissist or abusive person is looking for. Narcissistic people are ones that have an inflated sense of ego and an inflated sense of entitlement. And they feed off others by controlling them. And that allows them to feel that sense of entitlement and ego and it makes them feel great. And the way they can do that is if they find somebody who is the sort that has a lot of empathy and the tendency to put themselves above others. So if we're that type of person, we are going to put ourselves, them, them above us, and that's what they need in order to control us. And so once they detect what, what it is in us, and what that is, is an inner void of shame that we have, and it's a shame that's come somewhere from our childhood that makes us not feel good enough. And they think, great, that's somebody that I can manipulate and I can exploit and control. And so that's what they need. And they're really, really good at pushing those childhood buttons because that inner void of shame that we've got is also a fear of abandonment. We're so frightened of abandonment that when we get into this cycle of abuse, they know how to push these buttons in us. They, they, they know how to soothe that damaged inner child that has that feeling of not being good enough by love bombing us, telling us we're, we're wonderful, we're the only person for them. But they also know how to push the button, which is that inner void and that fear, fear of abandonment that after, uh, when they're abusing us and, and after they've abused us and they show us that remorse and the tears and, oh, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again, they know that our fear of abandonment will also mean that we need them to come back and tell us they love us again, if that makes sense. So they're pushing these buttons and they're really good at manipulating us by doing so. But the really interesting thing about this is that actually they are just the same as us. Although, you know, their over in self, uh, overinflated sense of ego is the extreme to our inner void of not feeling good enough and having a lack of self-esteem, we actually are fundamentally the same because they too are have an inner void of shame and they too have a fear of abandonment and that is why when you're in a relationship with them just at those moments where you think they're being vulnerable with me we're getting closer together and this is going to work the relationship is now feeling amazing it's where I want it to be we're now finally going to be happy they sabotage it they self-destruct and they push us away. And that's because they fear abandonment. And so they push us away before we abandon them, if you like. 
And that then gives them that sense of control back again and it pushes their fears of abandonment away. So if you look at it like that, that we're both the same, we both have this fear of abandonment and we both in a way need to push those fears of abandonment away because that's that that makes us not feel feel great oh the reason we do go for each other the reason we are attracted to each other in that sort of dysfunctional baggage sort of matches in a really weird destructive way is because we're trying to recreate feelings that are familiar from childhood no matter that they're negative we do want to repeat patterns from our childhood and we do that because we want to conquer them. And so what happens in the cycle of abuse is two people who have this fear of abandonment that's been there since their childhood. And they both want to conquer this fear. And the cycle of abuse is that power struggle that is about both of you pushing those fears away. So, for example, when they are abusing you and, and controlling you, they have the power and they feel strong. But as soon as they've done that, they fear they're going to lose you because they've hurt you, they know that you could leave them. So then they, they, they're terrified they're gonna lose you. So then they've gotta be remorseful and lovely and press that button that you know you want to be told you're good enough, you're loved again. And, and then you think, oh, Thank God, you know, my fear of abandonment goes away because now he's telling me he loves me. He's telling, telling me he needs me again. And then that gives me control over him. And, and in the reason it does is because when they're down and they're, they're needy and they're remorseful and they're doing that tears and I love you, I need you more than ever to change, that instills in us this sense that, we need to rescue them, that we can fix them. They only need us and then everything will be fine. They'll no longer be this abusive person. And that need to be needed and that need to rescue them is a way that we can put a band-aid over our childhood fears. And, and the reason it is that is because if, they, if we're with somebody that we feel is more damaged or needier than us, then we don't have to look at our own damage. We can just pretend that it doesn't exist. And it stops us having to face the truth. You know, we are just putting all of our energy into them so that we don't have to fix ourselves. And I hope, I hope that makes sense. It's quite complex, but this is what's happening in that cycle of abuse. It's a power struggle and it's both people just trying desperately um, to put a band over facing your fears that have been there from childhood. So why do we feel so sorry for them? We feel so sorry for them because when we see that remorse and that neediness and that um, down and out and being, being dejected, it's just pushing that childhood button and the, the pushing the button that, oh, I, 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 they need me, I can rescue them. And that feels good because I know that feeling of feeling good and I know that feeling of, of that covering up the fact that I have to look at all the fears I've got about being abandoned. And, and, and so that's all it is. It's just stirring up childhood fears. So the way we have to sort of stop that pull towards them is just recognizing this because that pull is so strong every time they're like that you just feel like you want to go back to them put your arms around them and say it's okay don't worry about my pain and my fears I'll look after you you've got to just recognize what it is it is what it is it and you've just got to realize that this is not healthy love this is about control it's about dysfunctional feelings and insecurities and lack of self-worth. So the way to stop that pull and the way to stop feeling sorry for them is to accept that you just cannot 
do anything about them. You cannot change them. You cannot rescue them. You cannot fix them. You have to excuse the drilling downstairs that just has just started. I live in Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is a construction site, so they drill all the time. I've been stopping and starting this video, and I give up. We're just going to have to put up with the drilling. Anyway, so so the way you, you the way you break it is you have to accept that this is not healthy love. You cannot fix or change them. Only they can change themselves. And when you think about a narcissist who is somebody who has a lack of empathy and absolutely no concept that they're having an impact on another person and basically their whole motto of life is I'm right, you're wrong, everyone else is to blame, the chances of them changing is pretty darn low in my opinion. So you might as well stop wasting your time and energy. The most important way of breaking that feeling sorry for them and breaking that pull towards them is to do the opposite. Stop trying to fix them, stop trying to heal them and fix yourself instead. You need to counter what it is that attracts narcissists to you and attracts you to a narcissist and you have to fill that void of shame. The only way is to fill that void with self-love, to fill the shame with love. And if you can do that, gradually that pull towards them starts to be diluted and lessen and go away. One of my best friends had a brilliant expression. She said, it's just like a plant. Stop watering it and it'll just wither away. And that's exactly what happens. You've just got to let go let them live their life, stop taking responsibility. They are adults. They need to take responsibility for their own actions. So just let them do that and focus on you. And this is what I go into in great depth in my Start With Me Victim to Survivor course because this is the foundation. Um, and, and I've just given it to you in brief, but I go into this in depth in my course because this is the fundamental thing that will make you change your life and is cutting that pull towards them. Um, anyway, so I'll finish there, but uh, thank you to, I won't name who's asked me to do this video for privacy reasons, because she is a victim of domestic violence and I like to keep people's privacy, but you know who you are and thank you for that, because I think that was a really valuable one to talk about and it was definitely something that was crucial to my recovery. Uh, anyway, I'll end up with the fact that if you do want to join my uh, Start With Me Victim to Survivor course, there's just 24 hours left and then the doors are closing uh, for this first run. I'm, I'm doing my first run starting on Monday. So if you sign up in the next 24 hours, I will see you on Monday and I'm really excited to join those who are already in there, um, in the course and on the private secret Facebook group that's going to go along with it. So um, sign up in the next 24 hours, I'll see you in there. And if not, I'll see you on my blog, uh, www.beingunbeatable.com, on my Facebook at Being Unbeatable, and Instagram is the same, or my YouTube channel. See you then.